I'm, maybe you're a bit sleepy at the end of the day, but I hope you will be able to understand what I'm going to talk with lots of examples, with lots of code examples, but afterwards. So I am a developer of the Kotlin programming language. I work at Chad Brains. You probably have heard about this company. It's the creator of IntelliJ IDEA that Android Studio is now based on. And uh, the slogan of my company is develop with pleasure. And uh, today I want to share with you how pleasurable can be an Android development with Kotlin. So JetBrains is mostly known as a creator of IntelliJ, as I have said already, but it also has created several different IDEs for different languages. That's why you shouldn't be really surprised when you've heard that it decided to create its own language, I suppose. After one of my previous talks, one guy asked me, is Kotlin specifically designed for Android? And I don't know, it's just a general purpose language. So I decided to add this slide. Kotlin is a language. You can think of it as a JVM language. General purpose JVM language. It is compiled to Java byte code. Of course, it has uh, another backend, JavaScript, but we now are not interested in it at all. So we, are, we will talk about JVM uh, backend. And it is an open source project. So it was the basic information about Kotlin. And uh, this one is an important information about Kotlin. Kotlin is modern and pragmatic. Why it's important? What is all the fuss about these modern languages? Modern, better Java languages. We have now Swift that is somehow better than C Sharp for iOS developers. What's it all about? Why do we need at all these modern languages? We have Java, we have C Sharp, and so on. Why uh, it matters? And from my point of view, it matters because of readability. It turns out that during, your, during the development process, the, uh, most time you spend, the most time you uh, do the work, what's, what, uh, sp what you spend most time on is reading the code, not writing it. Do you agree? Yeah, so when you have to fix something, you have to find the exact place where you should fix it. You should find the exact place where should you add your changes and, it, or, and do something. So we would like to make our projects, to make our code as readable as possible. And I would say all these modern languages have this, the same goal, to improve the readability of your code. Of course, if you like to write dirty code very fast without too much thinking, these languages can give you more power to spoil everything. But we assume that uh, you like beautiful code, you try to do your best, uh, you think about the design of your system, and in this case, these languages can help you enormously to improve the quality of your code. So, from my point of view, this is what all these modern languages have in common. They are concise and expressive. Several features can help make your code more concise. We will talk about them later in the talk. I mean, local type inference, lambdas, function, functions as a first class objects, extension functions, and so on. And at the, sa at the same time, these languages give you more power. They help you express yourself and what you're going to write, or giving you more abstractions. You have more power to extract something in the library, to create a more domain-specific code, a P, and so on. And that's important. OK, but there is another side of this picture. On the, one side, on the one hand, it's modern, like all these modern other languages. But I would uh, say that it's pragmatic language as well. What do I mean by this? Of course, at first, it's safe and uh, fast. We are really performance-oriented, and we really want to make our code to run as fast as it, uh, as it, possibly, as it possible. And, uh, uh, Later, I will show you 
some examples of it. And uh, this safety and uh, for, uh, performance means actually that we need a statically typed language. I would say it's really important for Android because you have this performance constraint on small devices and you can't just uh, be happy with dynamically typed languages because you will lose the performance. So it's an issue, of course. Another thing, I would say JetBrains were really spoiled because uh, like maybe two months ago I was listening to the talk about Swift and uh, they showed some examples and uh, if I'm not mistaken, there. Um, there was uh, a lack of some simple refactoring, like rename maybe. I don't know, maybe they fixed it already because it was several months ago, but I was so surprised. I was just, how it can be uh, without this simple thing to, that can help me? So in JetBrains, we have IntelliJ plugin from scratch. And actually, the rename refactoring appeared uh, at the very beginning when uh, there was no a lot of Kotlin at all. Another important issue, important point with Kotlin, that really differs is from some other JVM languages. I'm not sure the JVM languages are really an issue for Android because they don't suit for different reasons. But anyway, if you're talking for, for Java generally, it's an important difference. Kotlin can be easily mixed with Java. So you can develop your Java application and add and uh, Kotlin code very smoothly in small portions. You don't have to rewrite everything, convert everything. No, you can just add your new Kotlin co your new code, for example, in Kotlin, and uh, that's all. And uh, then, but why it works uh, like this is that Kotlin code can be easily used from Java. Actually, for average JVM languages, usually they are compiled to Java byte code or Java source, sometimes very rarely. But usually you can use Java, Java classes without the problems from this X language. But when we are talking about vice versa, then the problems can start. Because if you try to, to invoke, uh, for example, Scala code from Java, it looks like you're doing something strange, something different for Java platform. And with Kotlin, it's not an issue. So Kotlin code from Java looks like normal Java code. But on the other hand, uh, in Kotlin, it will look much nicer. Why so? Because actually, it's the only reason why it's, it works, because we are thinking about it all the time while designing the process. So we have this in mind, that we need to be easily mixed with Java. And that's why it's different, actually. So for example, Scala and Salon guys, they want to improve the whole world. They just don't, it, it just doesn't matter for them if it can be mixed easily or not, and so on. So uh, this was like some introduction part. And what's wrong with Kotlin? Why it's not the Kotlin conference? And uh, why you don't all use Kotlin already? Actually, when Kotlin 1.0, I, I would say it's uh, one of the most uh, frequently asked questions when we released. We haven't released yet, and uh, now if you tried, who tried some bit of, a bit of Kotlin, maybe? Okay, so maybe you have noticed that, that it works, but uh, it has, but we, we have to fix something more. So now we are going to release and uh, we are trying to fix last changes and we can't guarantee the backward comp compatibility before that. But for now, uh, usually people don't, I don't know, who, who tried it? What do you say? How it was? Nice, it worked, it worked. More options maybe? Because last year people who tried it uh, sometimes said that, oh no, there are too many exceptions and uh, too many bugs. But now the actual feeling is uh, nice, but uh, we, we, we will guarantee the backward compatibility after the, re the release. So uh, on the last talks I told here something like uh, this summer, but now I would say just coming soon because uh, it seems to be not this summer, but maybe this, the beginning of the autumn. And as you can see, that in the beginning of the autumn, they will say it's in the middle of the autumn. But anyway, I would say that if we didn't release it this year, the brain's team, the brain's team will kill Kotlin team, so you at least have some fun. Okay, so I think now we are going to, to look some 
uh, demo. And at first I want to show you how easy it is to start developing in Kotlin, in Android Studio, of course. So uh, I created a simple default application for you, just not to spend time on it. So it's just the main activity automatically generated by Android Studio. And, uh, what a, and I installed Kotlin plugin in Android Studio. So what I can start with, I can convert automatically, oh, just a second, yes, I think this would be better. I can uh, convert Kotlin file, Java file to Kotlin file, and uh, it will automatically convert uh, my activity. And now you see Kotlin code instead of Java code. You, you, at first you see that it's quite similar. The same, th there, there is fun keyword and uh, some other differences, but generally it's something looks like the same. Actually, it's a very good uh, uh, way to start developing in Kotlin. If you just don't want, don't know how to do something, you write the code in Java, convert it, and uh, you don't spend time on trying to figure out how to express for loop uh, and, and so on. But uh, it's, not, it's not the only thing you, you should do. Then you should add your dependencies to Gradle, but again, you can do it automatically. You can just say, <coughs> configure, Kotlin in project, this one, and uh, this action will automatic, automatically add all the dependencies you need. So that's all. After that, you can try to use Kotlin in your project. I think it should be right. Simple, it showed me uh, what it added, Kotlin Android, plugin and the dependencies. <clears throat> okay, then uh, I want to go to more interesting stuff. I've created two very simple applications for you. Actually, I'm not an Android developer yet. I, I hope I will be able to write something soon at the Brains Hackathon. Uh, but now I've created something rather simple, but I hope it will demonstrate you what Kotlin can do for you as Android developers. Uh, so my first application will be just two buttons that we uh, can click and uh, have some toast appeared. Everything is pretty simple. So let's uh, do the job with a simple button. You see that we set on click listener and we use the first feature, lambdas, who, have, uh, who know everything about lambdas already and don't want me to repeat. Okay, <laughs> most of you uh, suggest, uh, think that I can add something new for you. Actually, what's, uh, what's interesting here, oh, I think we, uh, sorry, I think we'll go to lambdas and see what, what it was. So lambda is a functional value. You can create this expression. So declare a function that can be stored in a variable and that you can, uh, use as an argument of other functions and so on. So here we declared a functional variable sum of type function from intuit returning init value, and uh, we can use it as a usual function in Kotlin. Then, and uh, the, here we declared again the function apply that has a, a function as an argument, and you can uh, have uh, write uh, the, this lambda as, in a, as in a lambda expression as an argument. Uh, now there is an important point, so please remember because we'll use it later. You can omit the round brackets if lambda is the last argument. So we have a special intention for it. So it is the same as before. It's just a syntactic sugar. Okay, and uh, we'll use this uh, nice sugar later in the talk, so please take it in mind. What else we can do with lambdas? Uh, this, the, the functional style developing is, uh, a play, uh, can be used in Kotlin, so we can create, for example, Java collection, a collection and uh, filter it with uh, using the lambdas. Important thing there, that as I told before, Kotlin is pragmatic. And uh, we don't want to create our own libraries. 
we want to use Java libraries, just add a good bunch of extensions to them and improvements. But this list is usual Java list. Actually, a list will be created. So the question is how this filter function works. Uh, and uh, I, the answer is that this filter function is an extension function on collection class. And now we are going to see what are these extension functions. One more thing I forgot to mention, this uh, pragmatic side of lambdas, when you look at this code, actually you can write something like this even in Java 6 with anonymous Java classes. But the problem is that anonymous Java classes are, of course, they are unreadable, they are too much boilerplate, but the other thing is the performance. Because if you have too many anonymous classes, especially in Android, your application will suffer from the, the, these two, the, the, the fact there are too many. And in Kotlin, we have an option to inline this lambda in the code. So actually, this invocation, the filter function is declared as inline function, and it will inline the body of this lambda. So you won't lose a performance when you write the code like this. Okay, so let's go to maybe some questions. Maybe it's too easy for you. For who is it is too easy? We'll soon. No, no one. <laughs> uh, who will? Who? Okay, others, please ask some questions. Okay, you are too sleepy after the whole day. I see. Okay, so again, there is just lambdas. It's functionally, uh, the, I'm sorry, I sometimes I use, uh, it's my bad habit, sometimes I use the term lambda and sometimes I use the term functional literal because the, the second one is how we name it in Kotlin, in Kotlin inside our team. And I'm really sorry, it's just, it's, it's just the same. And uh, every time I use functional literals, please, please uh, understand that it's, it's lambda actually. Okay, thank you. So. Again, it's a lambda that creates a function in your code and a, a variable of functional type, and you can use it uh, easily for in your code. So let's go to extension functions. I would say that these two features uh, really help, are the most important to simplify and uh, to make more enjoyable the Android development. And uh, at first, I want to explain you these features, and then I will show you lots of examples with them. So this one is important as well. In Kotlin, we can extend the existing class with a new function. For example, I'm sure every team has its own string utils class that has a bunch of util functions for Java strings. And in Kotlin, we have something in, No, but in Kotlin, you have... Uh, you can declare a, uh, the, the extension for string class, but you can be, it can be invoked much more easily in your code. And the code became more readable. So what's going on here? Uh, string is a usual Java class. Again, I uh, repeated that we want to change everything in Java. We, want to, we have to cope with the existing frameworks, libraries, and so on. So we don't have our own strings, but we can improve them with these extensions. Now, we extend the string class with this uh, function last char, and uh, in the implementation of this class, we can use this uh, reference as uh, the string that is a receiver of this function here. So it's just, and uh, as usual for this, we can omit it. So the second one is the same as the first one, is just we omitted this reference. Why it's important? Because uh, in Kotlin, we, you can use these extensions after the dot, so this code is much more readable than if you say last char and uh, string is in first argument, and it is visible in completion. For example, if you use completion, like here I used smart completion, you see these extension functions like a usual member of the class. So it does simplify your development. And, um, but you can be interested uh, it, how it is uh, implemented. Do we add this function to the existing Java class, for example? What do you think? 
Now, we can't do it at all, so we can't change the existing Java class, obviously. So what we do actually, we compile it to usual static method, static Java method, in a special class. And if you want to use this extension function from Java, there is no problem. It now, for me, I named my package util, so this function is located in this util package, and from Java I can use it easily, like usual Java code. So uh, it, will t it, it looks like you wrote it in Java and just use it from Java, no problems. And this string becomes the first argument of this function, the receiver. Okay, so how these extensions can help us to improve our Android experience. You see, we have this make toast make text function, and uh, what it does is, I think, very simple. It just uh, generates a new toast for you, and in Kotlin we can declare the toast function just like this. So we have toast and long toast for the another constant, but it looks much simpler. And uh, how it works? Because you see this toast function uh, has this as an argument, so has activity as a first argument. Where is uh, th this uh, expression in the, the, the Kotlin, fun Kotlin function? So actually, I can write just like this, and uh, what it means is that toast is declared as an extension function in Kotlin library. And you can do lots of stuff like this. You can uh, add your extensions, improving the readability of the code you produce, on activities, on contexts, and so on. So I'll show you a bit more examples, just in a second. And it just works. OK, so uh, now I will try to explain another interesting feature in Kotlin, and then we'll look at some really nice stuff. Who have heard about uh, how different modern languages cope with null pointer exception problems, nullability? So there are some different approaches, nullable types, option types, and so on. And uh, what's the problem? In Java, in the, usually in the type, you can store null reference, but uh, then you can't, get, you can't know whether it throws null pointer exception or not. You can't guarantee the absentee, the absence of these null pointer exceptions. But in Kotlin, we have the special nullable types that help you to cope with nullable issues. So uh, here, if you declare it the variable of type button, Kotlin is statically typed language, so every variable in Kotlin has its type. It's just inferred from the context. So now when we declared this click me button, it's a variable. It uh, has a type, it's, it's not groovy. We have the types everywhere, but it was just infer inferred from the context, from what we from, from what we, we, we written here, as is the analog of instance of. So <clears throat> for now, if we, uh, if we want to uh, throw here null pointer exception, if there, are no, if there is no view with such an ID, what we can do, we can uh, say, OK, uh, let it be nullable, and uh, please uh, return me the result of a nullable type. OK, I think I'll uh, show the examples here. Uh, so in Kotlin, we have, uh, we have two two kinds of types, usual types like in Java, the whole hierarchy, and nullable types is the same as this but with question mark at the end. And uh, if there is a variable of nullable types, you can't uh, do anything on it without check. check. So on S1 you can invoke length function, but on S2 if you try to do it, the compiler will warn you and say, okay, but there is, can be null pointer exception here, so do something. And uh, what options do you have? You can check explicitly if it's, I'm sorry, if it's not null. And in this case, there is no problem. Of course, you can do the same thing in Java, 
but it's too bo much boilerplate, and we want to simplify it. So on Kotlin, you have uh, more options to cope with these nullable types. So the general idea is that you have these nullable types, but the, and you have to check always explicitly uh, that you, when you dereference something that is not null, but you have several different options how to check it. Okay, I think I'll show you all now. Uh, so you can uh, use this safe dereference with question mark. If I'm not mistaken, it was stolen from Groovy or something. Actually, uh, to some extent in Kotlin, we didn't invent new features. We just uh, have them from different other languages. So uh, m maybe it's the, there is only one new, but I'll show it later in the next example. Uh, this way, you uh, have the default value for this nullable ex expression of nullable type. And uh, if, if you really want to throw null pointer exception, you can say two, question, two exclamation marks. Uh, in Swift, uh, they have the same nullability types, nullable types, and they have one exclamation mark. In Kotlin, we have two just to, please don't try not to use it. But anyway, it's a bit more explicit that, okay, in this place, the null pointer exception can be thrown. You see it at that, uh, immediately. And you can uh, check uh, if it's null, the common pattern check for if it's equal to null and then return or fail. Fail, there is a function that throws the exception. And after that, you can check, uh, you can use this, uh, this variable as of a not nullable type. You see that uh, in Kotlin, you don't have to create explicit variable of a new type when you check it. So uh, Kotlin understands that you, you checked, then, okay, you can reference it without, without problems. Questions? We want to sleep? We want to go? Okay. Uh, let's return to our main activity then. So you know that now, uh, if, I do, if we don't declare this activity, the, the view with this click me button, uh, we just can uh, declare a variable of these nullable types. And uh, uh, in this case, if this click me button will, will be null, do nothing. Don't throw an exception, maybe log something or whatever. But don't throw an exceptions, exception to, to the user. Okay, then I will uh, show you, to some extent, the, mon the most intriguing feature of Kotlin for Android. And actually, it's not a feature of Kotlin. It's an extension plugin that you can install and uh, improve your experience here. I want to simplify this text even more. So let's return it to, to the not nullable case. It's already very simple. What, what should I do here? But I can write like this. Yes. Maybe you've heard about this feature. So the idea is that everyone is tired of this find view by IDs. And you have lots of uh, ways how to cope with it butter knife, etc. so different frameworks. And Kotlin has its own approach. How does it work? In Kotlin, the special, actually I've told you about extension functions, but there are extension properties, properties as well that's, that's like usual, usual variables. Properties, doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, in Kotlin, there are some special extension properties generated for each ID declared in your XML. And uh, you have to import them explicitly. So now, actually what, what uh, I've done, I, I have imported these extension properties for my activity, and then I can use it. Actually, when I import them, I can import uh, this property, for example, with another name, if you, ha if you have uh, f somehow uh, the same IDs for different views 
in your layouts, you can do it. You can change the name while on import. And uh, how it works? Actually, when you uh, write the code like this, uh, the exact invocation is generated for you behind the scenes. So uh, I, I want to repeat it. It's not Kotlin. It's an extension plugin for. It, it's called Android extensions for Kotlin, if I'm not mistaken. I share share the name afterwards. So you install this plugin, and it generates uh, these extension properties for all the IDs in your activities, and then you can use it in your code. Here, when you invoke this ID, what code is generated is that find view by ID is generated for you, actually with a cache. So uh, this plugin generates uh, for every activity ca lazy cache, and if in the, acti in the Kotlin activity you will invoke uh, you will use these extension properties, then it will uh, save it in the cache of the activity. Okay. Uh, the main idea is that you can use this feature, and uh, the extension plugin just generates some sp some synthetic code for you. That's that what's what is important. Okay. Then I want to. Uh, show you a bit more of extensions improving the Andro Android experience. And uh, I have, I've shown you the, in the example there are two, bot two buttons. And uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, have set another listener on my second button, uh, starting the new activity. And uh, what I can do here is I can simplify the code again within extensions. In Kotlin, I can uh, do something like this. I can create start activity with the intent for uh, function. I have this new activity. And uh, then I can uh, say just like this. Two is another extension function from starter Kotlin library that just has an uh, infix notation, uh, you, you can just invoke it in infix notation, so it's the same as uh, saying this dot and with the uh, uh, round squares. It's not a special concept. So the idea is that with these extension functions, you can make your Android code more clear. The same, it's not a big deal, it's not something uh, that, uh, something difficult or whatever, but uh, it just simplifies what you're writing in your Android application. And if you not, ah, I'm sorry that there is, uh, we, ha we had the flag, and uh, uh, here we, ha we can set this flag again by an intention, or by an extension. What, what's, why it's important that there are extensions? Because we can, use it like usual meta start activity. We don't have to have the util function uh, that taking this as an argument. So that's how extensions help you to write your code. If you don't need this flag, you can simplify uh, creating your activi new activity even more, just saying like this. So, and it, it, it's not something very difficult. To, to understand, it's readable, and it's more readable than the, ex than the whole example. Okay, I will uh, show you one more feature of Kotlin, and then we'll go to the, what, what's the time is it? Okay. It's okay, to the next example, actually. Uh, one, one more strange things. In Kotlin, we have default and named uh, arguments. So we have default uh, parameters for default arguments for some parameters, like here. So you don't have to write lo lo long lists of overloads. You can just say, okay, default argument will be this one, and uh, when you invoke, uh, it will be. You, you can provide the argument, or you can use the default one. And uh, when you invoke a function, you can use 
uh, the na you named argument, so you can just explicitly say say it names. And actually, in a good in some style convention, when you use boolean flags, you always have to write its name in the commentary because otherwise it's not uh, understandable what you're what you, what's what you mean here. And in Kotlin, you can have it uh, just like this. It's more convenient when you, for example, rename the name of the argument. It will change as well. Okay, so now we are going to see one more, I would say, the most difficult feature of Kotlin, the one who wasn't stolen from anybody. But uh, we'll, I, I'm not sure we, we are go, going to go deep into details how it is implemented. At least we are going to see how it works. So I have another great application for you. At this time, I want to show you the time in two locations in my in the place where I live, as you all already know, and here. And uh, at first, when I just start to create this application, I want to um, make it as simple as possible, and uh, I want to sorry. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, there are too many idea projects. Uh, recent, yes, this one. At first, I uh, don't think too much about adding new locations, and I try to uh, create it statically. So I declare a layout for uh, my application, very simple one, with, uh, uh, where are you? Oh. There is some problems with uh, one table and uh, two table rows in it. I think this should be very, it's very simple. So I just declare this layout and uh, as i shown you already, I can uh, use this extension, this plugin to set uh, the right time zone. I declare it to constants for time zones as well. So that should be very easy. But then an interesting part starts. What if I want to create these layouts dynamically? What options do I have? And uh, in Kotlin, uh, you have an option to, I mean, uh, what, what do you want if you, if you, you, you want to, to like add, like add a new location and so on? And in Kotlin, you can really create locations, uh, create these layouts dynamically. In Java, you can do it, but it's very unreadable. You know, you create, you create a variable and then you set all the properties. And XML is much more readable because it's the clear structure. But in Kotlin, what you have is you have the same structure as in XML, but in code. So this one is uh, the same uh, layout as we've seen in the XML, but written in Kotlin builders, so-called builders. And it's code. So you, you see the same. You see this table row, table layout. For now, it's only one table row. And uh, there is text view in there and text, text clock. Yes? And uh, we set all the parameters. But what, what does it mean, how it works? Actually, uh, do you remember, uh, you have, you, I, I, I wanted you to remember something, something, yes? In the beginning of the talk. What I wanted you to remember is that we have this syntactic sugar for lambda as the last argument. You can omit the round brackets. And here is why, um, the case where we use this convention. Actually, this lambda, it, actually these curly brackets is a lambda. And this table layout is function invocation. And uh, then uh, the most uh, brainstorming thing is that actually it's not just a lambda. In function, oh, in Kotlin we have functions and extension functions. In extension functions, you can omit this reference. And in Kotlin we have lambdas and extension lambdas. And in extension lambdas, you can omit this reference. So how it actually works is that this table row is not just a function. It's an extension function that can be uh, invoked only in a special class 
associated with, with this table layout. That's how you can't just declare your table row anyway. You can declare your table row only in table layout, only it, where it's possible. Here I showed you named arguments. So table view is function navigation, Berlin is argument, and name, text is just the, the name of the argument, and so on. And uh, here the same set times on function that I've shown you before. And uh, what, so, but I wanted to uh, create uh, these locations dynamically. And what's important here is that it's a code, you can extract it, you can declare functions, you can do whatever you want, and what's important for now, for now it's only one table row here. But what I can do, as it is the code, I can write, write usual Kotlin code here, and I can iterate over locations. I declared this collection somewhere, and I can add dynamically this table row for each of the locations. And that's what uh, useful in this, uh, create is in this way of creating these layouts dynamically. So you can write your usual Kotlin code there, and it just works for you. Okay, so then we'll see... Uh, ah, we, we wanted to... Uh, to change actually here the, the barrel into the location name, and uh, I wanted to show uh, a bit of magic again. Uh, again, if you don't want how to express something, just use uh, Java to Kotlin converter. There is just standard uh, Java class, and uh, if you want, you can convert it uh, to Kotlin file, and uh, it looks a bit more easy to read and short. And actually, it's the same. It's the same code is generated for you, like the constructor and two getters. But let's return to our uh, more difficult example with locations. Here we iterate over locations, and we create uh, the text to you with each, each location. I'm sorry, not Russian language in the code. And uh, uh, ah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. I don't know why. We won't um, spend time on it. <clears throat> but, oh, maybe uh, something more was in Russian. <laughs> yeah. At least you've seen a bit of Russian letters through the presentation. So what I want to show next, uh, so this is actually questionable, is it so useful in a, an usual Android development because you, of course, you have like dif uh, difficult layouts and uh, sometimes it's more convenient to write them in XML with the, with the help of designers and so on. But anyway, for simple cases, you can use the Kotlin approach. And um, when you don't have to, when you have to create like simple layouts and so on. So, uh, for example, I want to uh, be really sure that you really want to add a new location. And uh, uh, you see this uh, alert, and uh, I can create this alert again with, uh, with this, the same semantics. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Uh, yes. So I've uh, secretly added uh, the same the, the, the last button that you've uh, seen uh, just uh, there in the application. So there is a button at location, and on click, I uh, at first I say, show uh, your sh uh, this your sure alert, and it is declared somewhere in my code. Okay, just a second, to not be, not to be distracted by something else. And uh, I hope you see this correspondence between the alert and the way I declare this alert. And uh, I use uh, the, same, the same approach, yes? 
And uh, this one is, so the same approach, the same logic, the same builders. Alert is a function, this one is a lambda, and positive button uh, is an extension function that you can, that you can invoke on, some, on the class corresponding to these alert functions. Yes, we are almost there. So uh, you see that this, in this case, the code for Android is a bit more readable than another way you, you will declare a, the same thing. And uh, okay, I really want to add another location. And actually, I wanted to add a location uh, of Kotlin. Kotlin is an island near St. Petersburg. And uh, it has the same time zone as St. Petersburg, actually. So uh, this uh, alert uh, of adding another location can be, again, uh, declared with this uh, with with uh, these dynamically created layouts. So generally, you can use this approach for some simple cases. And uh, well, I hope we'll uh, add very soon in the future that you would be able to uh, use your, dec your declared layouts in the same approach, something like um, just add my XML layout in this, uh, in this place in the code. So, uh, again, there's the same idea. I would say this, uh, in, Gro in Groovy, they have the same builders, and maybe some of you have heard of them before. These uh, builders to create different types of d d objects. But the thing is, in Kotlin, they are statically typed. So, uh, in Kotlin, these builders, the, this, the, the function has corresponding type, and uh, in these uh, lambdas, you can use not everything, but only what uh, ca can be approached in the, in the context. Okay, so I'm, uh, uh, I think, satisfied with uh, the examples. Uh, so I will finish my talk, and there's just to uh, repeat some, some questions, uh, s s something. At first, the most important thing is that it's extremely easy to start developing with Kotlin. You just edit a new project, and then if you're not sure, you can convert Java, existing Java code into Kotlin and uh, try to see whether it looks better or not. If you want to try to use some advanced features, you can download Ank library and uh, use it. Um, I wanted to, to say this, uh, this there are the references for Kotlin and uh, for uh, Kotlin extensions for Android is the plugin I've, sh I've showed you with these uh, IDEs, things, and uh, you have uh, Anchor library with the DSL syntax, with the syntax to create the DSL, the dynamic layouts, and for the, uh, some other cool features. And of, we as well has the uh, anchor DSL preview, so the DSL that you created with this, with this dynamic layouts, you can preview as well. Uh, if you want to try to uh, learn Kotlin, we have a special uh, Kotlin cons for you. It takes uh, something about six hours to complete them, so there, there is a project with some tasks to, to accomplish. Then you can download and actually fix all tests, and uh, after six hours of hard work, you will be able to say, yes, I know Kotlin. Uh, last thing that I skipped here is uh, that uh, Jake Wharton, in, in his, uh, I would say, rather positive um, article about Kotlin, notice that uh, for now Kotlin, when you add Kotlin, Kotlin for your Android application, it's not uh, very heavy because actually we, we, we don't, wait, so we have this Kotlin compiler and we have Kotlin standard library. We don't have to recreate everything. We just add some features, some, some bunch methods. It's not very big stuff. So comparatively, comparatively it's not it's not big, so you can use it easily. Again, the, the links, and uh, thank you. Thank you.